the part that bothers me, outside of the, you know, obviously being an alum and, and the fan, we talk so much in society about the young kids, right? It's always the kids. The kids are the problem. The kids are hitting the transfer portal. They don't want to fight. They don't want to do this. The kid, And I always ask, who's raising the kids? The problem has never been the kids. Kids see through BS. It's the problem is the people who are in charge. From the day I played, the first day I picked up my helmet, I was, I was told that football is fair. When I go on that field, everybody has the same rules. Everybody has we with same lines of play. Referees are aren't, aren't um they, they're they're humans. They're gonna make mistakes. But the thing is, we all got the same helmet, same shoulder pads, same pants. Some people might be better, but we got the same equipment. We we have to run the same hundred yards, ten yards to get a first down, such and such, and so on and so on. You're taught that if I go out there and win, even on a high school level. It's not necessarily that it's fair per se, but we had an opportunity. If you take care of your if you take care of business in high school, if you win your district, you get the opportunity to represent your district at minimal in the state championship playoff um, series. Mandarin High School, I coach at, we won our district. We got an unfair slate. We had to go on the road four times. We've gone, we've traveled over um, over 50 hours. Like to, to go play some high school football. Like there and back last Friday, we, we drove five hours to um, to Monarch High School, played a game, got done at twelve, drove back. I had to fly right to the airport to be able to fly to Sharp. Drive right to the airport to fly to Sharp. Nobody, I didn't, I didn't have. We should have some home games, but we didn't care about that. We at least got the opportunity. We lost the game that we should. That if we would have beat, now we corrected it in the playoffs. But if we had beat that team in the regular season like we were supposed to, we would have got the host. We didn't cry. We didn't complain. There is no thing because we got the opportunity. You get that everywhere. NFL, you, you you skip a step, go to the NFL, look at the San Francisco 49ers. They almost went to the Super Bowl with Mr. Irrelevant. But then Mr. Irrelevant got hurt. Imagine if they used the logic. And there's a lot more money involved in the NFL than there is in college. So in the NFL in of itself, I think would be a top 15 rated gross domestic product country. But the money, it, it's, it, it is a less pure game than college, except for when it comes to crowning a champion. They don't care how you get there. It's 17 weeks to determine if you are the, some of the, the, the better teams at the end. Doesn't matter your health. Doesn't matter what it is. And that's why they have a playoff to be able to determine it. You just really, but if they started doing it, well, you know what? Trevor Lawrence got hurt. The Jaguars look good, but man, you know, okay, well, you're nine and you're nine and you're, you're 10 and seven, but the Ravens, they're eight and nine, but they got Lamar Jackson. Let me just, let's flip you guys real quick. I think you have a better chance of representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. Just the one thing I always tell people is forget about who it is, take the logic. And apply it to other similar situations in your life. And if it doesn't make sense, that's because you're trying to force something to make sense that you know doesn't make sense. And that's where the big problem comes in because everything they teach you about team sports, everything they teach you about football, it skips a step because right now it's about this. And that's why I say just call it what it is. Call it something different. That is not a playoff. That is an invitational. And that is that is when you a playoff. Literally, the best teams that made it to the top are in the playoff. An invitational. Oh, we chose, and that's what Boo said. We picked the best or the most deserving teams, and I also hate that because that's a, that's an entitlement issue. Football is not supposed to be about entitlement. It's about it be what you earned, what you did. The argument like you can't really. What can you argue to Florida State? That's in their control. They played everybody. The schedule was supposed to be one of the best. It's actually not even was supposed to. Is per ESPN rankings, the schedule was like the third, the, the, the third toughest schedule per ESPN. What for one of the things, obviously, it's a whole bunch of other metrics that people can pick and choose from, but it's there. But whatever, you're in a power five conference, you go undefeated in the power five. That's supposed to be something that everybody leans on. But I can argue with Texas. Forget everything about it. You lost to Oklahoma. Shouldn't have lost. Alabama. You lost to Texas. That sounds good. All your arguments sounds good, but you lost. 
Florida State didn't lose. They couldn't. They, they, you, the schedules are made with damn near a decade in advance. Like, like years in the, like, how can you go back and change like who they played? Like you said, they could have played better, but the objective is to win the football game. You play well enough to win the game. But lastly, again, and I just like because again, it, it becomes you harp and you did because nothing's going to change. They can't change this season. That's done. But what you can do is make sure that this doesn't because if it can happen to Florida State, it can happen to anybody. And I'm trying to tell my friends who are Miami fans, like y'all laughing right now, but if you're ever to come back, like you say you are. This could happen to you. You play a weaker schedule than Florida State. Like, imagine you're in this situation. But it's because of the conference that you're in. And what and what I don't, I can't wrap my mind around is how a guy would willingly take a submissive role for his conference that you're representing, like on purpose. Like. It, it does outside of the, you got paid off where you took your you your, your, was it your 15 pieces of silver we're about to get into the holiday season like you took your little pieces of silver or whatever but like I just like how could you be in control how could you be in charge I, how could you as a head coach of like if you're adoring how can I respect you like what if this were me would you just let North Carolina State not play in the national championship and I guess the bigger question, too, when I go back to the youth, when we teach the youth, is this a team game or is this a one-person game? There are 120 players on Florida State's roster, 85 of which are on scholarship, of which about, I'd argue, 55 play consistently. So you're telling me one player got hurt. And that completely wiped away all the work that everybody else did to make that team go undefeated. That's the lesson in which you want to teach. That's that's the that's what you want to put out there. And my problem is this is what we as adults do consistently. And then we say, oh, it's the kids. Who the hell are they following? You just showed a bunch of kids that, you know, and it's, to, it's the truth. My mom taught me this a long time. Some of us learned this a long time ago. You can do everything perfectly, and it's still, and, and you still won't get the results that you were that 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 you may deserve. But that don't stop you from doing it. But like again, can you? I can see how somebody could get discouraged. You can't. Fan base can't. Only thing you can do is play the games that they put in front of you um, at the highest level that you can do. Keep doing that. Play Georgia. Beat Georgia. Go fourteen and zero. Force the issue at the end of the year. And then what we need to do is guys like Mike Offord. Um, guys like Corey Simon, if you know what you said, guys like Drew Weatherford, guys like that, handle it behind the scenes so that we don't ever have the situation happen. Not from Florida State. I'd be I'd honest, I can honest God truth say that if Texas were undefeated and Florida State had one loss and other people have, I would say, you know what? They got robbed. Because I love the game. And this is just a like they're making it they, again, or as I suggest, because we'll change it. It'll change my complete thought. It'll be nice to play in the invitational. I would love an opportunity to play in the invitational, but I also think the AP, AP, and in, in, in the coaches poll really have an interesting thing that they can do. And I and, and if I'm feeling like they're trying to go scorched earth and have something to discuss the entire off season. Don't acknowledge the national champion from the college football invitation. If they lose, like I think if Michigan wins, the Michigan deserves it. If Washington wins, Washington deserves it. The other ones I think would have won, deserved to win the invitation. They deserve the invitational trophy. They deserve the opportunity to be considered one of the best teams in the nation. They deserve that. I can't speak and say if they are the national champions because I don't feel the four best or four the four teams that earned a spot in there earned a spot because there are definitely two teams that have one at least nothing more they have one question one question mark for each of them that is way more glaring than others so but at least we got a lot we got an active offseason that we can discuss about what if possibilities and a whole bunch of other stuff so 
If nothing else, ESPN provide a lot of us content. I'll hit y'all with two things real quick. AJ Duffy um, is entering the transfer portal. CJ Campbell has already entered the transfer portal. Uh, and we'll keep that up to date as much as possible. Uh, we've got – there'll be quite a few. Um, a lot of names you probably won't know. Some names you will. Like CJ Campbell, I think most everybody knows his name. AJ Duffy, obviously you know his name. Um, but they will all be posted, whomever they are. Uh, but I will only talk about those that I think everybody would resonate with. I don't want a bunch of questions. Well, who's that? What position? Well, I'm just going to post it. So, But that that's what all I have to add. You know, I've thought over the last couple of weeks, uh, the Texas-Bama argument kept coming up, and that kept being brought up to me by callers uh, that thought, okay, well, Alabama is better now than they were in week two. And that whole fight was going to play out with a head to head. And I said something similar to what James is talking about here with the NFL playoffs. And I said, I understand what you're saying. Everybody can have an opinion. You can have an opinion. Well, Alabama's gotten better. They're better now. I separate my opinion from what needs to be executed based on fairness and what was earned two different things. And I said the same thing. I said, can you imagine if we got to a national championship game? Georgia Bama, 2017. Georgia outplayed them. Had a two-score lead most of the game. Couple questionable calls, decisions. They lose in overtime. And if just a group of people, 13 people, I guess, came up to Nick Saban and ripped the trophy out of his hands and said, I, we know you won the game, but we think they're better. We just still think they're better. There you go. It's supposed to be the ultimate meritocracy college football is supposed to be the one thing if you go out there and win the games it's supposed to matter and you know they they did it they did away with that you, you list a million examples you'd never have tom brady when drew bledsoe went down um you can do all these things football is the one sport where it's a team sport and and the sum of the parts is greater um than the, than the individual player um, and going back to what Travis had to tweet, I mean, it's just for him to even have that mindset or be forced to yeah. even make a tweet like that is nuts. Yeah, that's horrible. And, and Chris said it a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about it. it. Makes total sense. I say the same thing. When there's a tie, when we've got, okay, conference champion versus conference champion, 12 and one versus 12 and one, then you start to analyze the play. Then you start to have to figure it out. Okay, we got six teams. We only got four spots. We got all these ties. Sure. Absolutely. And that, and that's not even fair, but that's what we got. You only got four spots. So that's had to be done a number of times, but there is only one goal. Every time two teams hit the field, there was only one goal and that's to win the game. It's not to win it by 58 or 13. It's just to come off the field as the winner. And they did that every time. I, I hope track and field doesn't, doesn't, doesn't change. <laughs> Just imagine like Bolt, you know, Bolt didn't get a chance to like he, he ah, the, it's in Jamaica. You're running on concrete. You don't have the Mondo Triple X turf, and you're wearing cleats and Adidas. Like it's just not the same. Like so, you're you don't get the I, your your time is fast, but it's not like over here in America or in Europe. So you don't get to compete in the like. It's just it's it's like it didn't even like the head to head like. If you're not a better team, like not just individual, but if you're not a bet, you should be a better overall team at the end of the season than you were in the beginning. It doesn't negate the fact that something happened. Just I hate to use it. This is a really random example, but like actually, not. I, I'm not the same person I was at 17 to 39. I should be different, right? That doesn't change if I committed a crime when I was 17. I don't get to just say, yeah, I'm different. You still get the you, or if I if I invested money at seventeen, like what's the good? Well, say I bought some stock in Amazon at seventeen, I get to keep that money. I can't say, well, you know, I was just seventeen. A lot's changed. You don't get to keep that. Give me that. It's not yours. You're seventeen, or just in general, stuff changes. You should be a better team at the end of the season than you were week one if you're an elite team. That doesn't stop the losing elite. But what separates the elite teams from each other? It has to be what you're like, what we went through. 
Hell, I think mean, to, to be honest with you, we can talk all about like again, Texas Alabama loss. Alabama's a better team. Are they better than Texas? I don't know. I know Texas beat you by 10 points earlier in the season, and Texas has gotten better. Texas didn't just stay the same, they got better. So I gotta go with y'all already played that game. We don't get the end. It's it, it damn. It, it's reminiscent of the first time, and this is where it bothers me about Alabama. So Martin, I might get you some some good clicks from Alabama, um, the, the people who just love Alabama and their national championships, that a lot of which most of them shouldn't count because they were played before the segreg- desegregation, and a lot of them are claimed national t- championships. They should not have ever had – LSU beat you at home. They should have never had to play you again. And the BCS formula got them into a situation where they got a chance to play. And they didn't have to – not only did you not have – did that happen, you didn't have to play in the SEC championship game. And you backdoored your way into a, into a natty. And this is the same thing. They did it two, two times. They've done it twice. It's not fair for me to have to like – like and you're not fair. That, that's not fair. That's entitlement right now to be able to get into there. That's what a true entitlement is. You lost, but you're entitled because you feel you didn't know you again. Everything else is debatable. We can debate a lot of things. It's and it's subjective. But objectively, the objective is to win football games. And we have these power conferences for a reason. We can, we've we had this debate on the show before, Mark, where we said we believe Big Ten is better, SEC is better, but I've always said the top one to two the top one to two teams in almost every conference more than likely can compete with the other conferences and win. SEC might win more often than not, but it should not necessarily be a blowout. But if you go undefeated in that conference and you win, the only time this should be an issue or a controversy is if the SEC – Pac-12, Big 12, ACC, and the Big 10 all respectfully had undefeated teams. That literally should be the easiest way to go. Like, all right, well, Big 10 doesn't have any more undefeated. Cool, that's out of the way. So if these four, now if you got all have one loss, now let the games begin. But this probably, again, to me, the top three spots, this should have been the easiest layup that they had. But again, we're showing people the truth, and it, it's the beautiful. It's it though it stinks. It's also one of the beautiful things of capitalism. And as a capitalist, it sucks for Florida State, but I get it. The here's money, something we here's something we can money, debate. The What's money, the money is the motivator, and we got to get in there. And that's why again, real simple solution here on Mark Rogers that we bought. Mark started off calling it this, so I want to make sure I'm gonna make sure I'm giving you your props. I'm circling back to like, let's get this. It's not the college football playoff. It's the college football invitational. Then you can't get mad. You can't get mad because you didn't get invited to a birthday party. It's not your party. If you don't like it, create your own party. So that's yeah, that's basically all we can all I can say about it. Well, here's something we can debate on. How, what's the over under on years or months before Boo Corgan is on uh, either either a uh, ESPN payroll or a SEC payroll? Um, we can let anybody can start this off. Um, I'm going to give it two. I'll say two years uh, would be a good. And there you go. <laughs> You're back. Yeah, I think everybody went south, but I said two. I'd set it at two years, and I'm going to go with the under on Book Oregon being on either SEC or uh, ESPN payroll. I think he's the fall guy, if you want my honest opinion. I think he's the guy that takes the fall for all of this. 